G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be having a, a quick look around Lubuntu Eon Ermin. I haven't actually said that name before since reviewing the Ubuntu's throughout this Ubuntu Derivative Challenge. So I just thought I'd put it to the test. Hope it sounded all right. In this one we are in Lubuntu running the Qt desktop. LXQT. What is Lubuntu? It's the official Ubuntu flavor, which uses the lightweight Qt desktop environment, LXQT, and it's to provide a lightweight yet functional Linux distribution based on a rock-solid Ubuntu base. So this is the third Lubuntu release with the LXQT as the main desktop environment. The Lubuntu project in 18.10 and successive releases will no longer support the LXDE desktop, all tools in the Ubuntu archive and will instead focus on the LXT, LXQT desktop environment. The following major applications and toolkits installed by default in this release. This is these ones here. And where can I download it? It uses the Calamari's installer. And so I had the uh, MX Linux distro on this computer prior to this install because I wanted to install it on the Lenovo IdeaPad 110 because it's it's a lower spec laptop. It's a um, reasonably new laptop, only one or two years old, I think, roughly. And uh, I just wanted to see how it goes on this laptop. That's how I always sort of um, test these type of uh, distros for to see how they cope on uh, on on a slightly lower end laptops. In here we uh, it uses the Calamari's in system installer in place of the Ubiquity installer that the other flavors use. Now when I installed this with the over the top of MX Linux I deleted and created all the partitions within Calamari's. Now I wasn't sure if that was going to work because it normally doesn't. But in this case, um, I did my normal install and created the FAT32 and set the boot ESP and so forth, and it worked like a charm. Installed like a charm, no problem at all. This version of Calamari seems to be working quite well. I didn't actually check that version number when I installed it, but it did work really well, so I was very impressed with that. So there was no having to do the pre-G-parted setup of partitions and that, which is what I normally have to do with Calamari. So I always try that way first and try my luck, and then if it doesn't work, I have to do another re another install. So, But I was happy with that. The artwork... They had a community contest for wallpapers and this person here, Marcelo de Morera, I would say that's his name, from Argentina, won the competition. Tells you a little bit about himself there. So if you wanted to read that, you could pause that. Tells you pretty much uh, what led him to um, finally decide to create a wallpaper himself and um, submit it within the challenge or the competition. And it says here we have also added some of the finalist artwork too. You can find them in the user share Lubuntu wallpapers directory. Let's have a look. Um, well, actually, let's go to here and we'll go to the root partition, a user share Lubuntu. Now, there's two Lubuntus. There's one with a capital L and there's one with a lowercase L, which is the one we're after, and wallpapers. And there's several other wallpapers in here. I think this is from, I think that one's from 1904, I think. So I'm not really sure which ones were the runners up or, you know, first, second, third place. I'm not really sure. So we'll just go through all of these and have a quick look. Well, that's a nice one. So like I said, I'm not really sure uh, which ones were... Maybe it's just that uh, other one there. Maybe is maybe the runner-up. I would say I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. I really like this wallpaper. It's um, I can see why it won the competition. It's a pretty good wallpaper, actually. Very nice job there. So we are running help and about PC Man FMQT. The one thing I wanted to check, which I think wasn't working in 1904. It could have been working in 19, 1904. I'm not sure, but 
under network, I couldn't normally get hold of uh, anything on my home network, but as you can see, the Fritz NAS is there, and I've already logged into my home network there, and it works. And I've already tried logging into the home network on under that, and it works fine, so that's all good. I'm pretty happy about that. Now, the one thing I do continue to check when I'm in Lubuntu is the desktop preferences, and to change your wallpaper, um, we still have to navigate to either your pictures or we need to go to the destination where we're just looking at, which is user, share, and Lubuntu. Lubuntu wallpapers, you could check, you could um, select them from there. So um, that's another thing I'm hoping they can probably get done prior to the 2004 release, which would be nice to see a proper desktop wallpaper selector within Lubuntu. That would be nice. I think that would really add to the polish of Lubuntu as it seems to be heading in a really good direction at the moment. Uh, what I do like about Lubuntu is their calendar. It's a nice big calendar, easy to see. Uh, I like, I really like that calendar. On here you have um, removable devices there. You got your power. You can click on mixer to go to your mixer and you can check your configurations there. Pretty handy. If you right click that, you've got other options here. You can configure your panel. You can add widgets if you need to. I haven't checked out all the widgets in this case. It's just going to be a very quick look over Lubuntu, but uh, seems to be coming along quite nice. I'm not sure if they had this theme um, in 1904, I cannot remember. But the theme is uh, pretty consistent across the board, looks pretty nice. So we'll run through quickly what they've got installed in here. Um, you can just have a quick look through that. Education, games, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, system tools, preferences, leave and lock screen. Now we've got discover in here. Now I did install simple screen recorder in discover and after I installed it, it did tell me that um, installation failed. However, it did install, but I had to log out and log back in. Now, I don't know whether that's a bug or not. I'm not really sure. But um, it did say installation failed, but there was no problems. Um, it did install okay. It wasn't shown in the menu as well until I logged out and logged back in. So you do have Discover here. Now, Discover's sort of um, coming along nicely. A lot of people sort of... Not a big fan of Discover. I think it's a nice sort of looking um, application installer. So I just got an update there. The other one you've got in the system here is uh, the Muon Package Manager, which is a little bit like Synaptic Package Manager, really, at the end of the day. And you can use that if you feel a bit more comfortable. And the obviously the other alternative is your terminal. So I've been looking through a uh, box boxlook.org I think it is and came across win 10 colors for open box themes so I downloaded that and I think I installed it um, I must have ex extracted it here win 10 dark and win 10 so just thought I'd see how Lubuntu and the QT desktop is handling some themes so I went to appearance and we have, um, actually, no, it's not that one. It's um, Window Effects, I believe it is. No, it's <laughs> it's Open Box Settings. I keep forgetting about that. Okay, so Lubuntu Arc is the default, I believe it was. I've been messing around with it, but I'm sure that that was the default. So I've got Window 10 Dark here because it gives you a bigger button. And as you probably, if you watch my videos, you know I like a big button. <laughs> It's just me, but uh, and I do have a bit of a favour 
towards the uh, Win 10, some of the Win 10 designs. I think they look okay. Um, I just, it's got a big button, that's what I like about it. So that one seems to come up okay. So it looks pretty consistent across the board. You got some session settings here. I've turned on Compton and I put my compton.conf file in there to reduce the screen tearing. It's actually pretty much got rid of it all. So under .config, compton.conf, that's my compton.conf. And I find that that one seems to work pretty well. And that was one that I originally used, I think, in Peppermint. And it seems to reduce screen tearing. So I can share it if you wish. Um, I think I've got it somewhere. And uh, if anybody, I don't know if I should up, uh, just put it on on the um, in the comments or not. I could probably do that if anybody wants it. So that's how I got rid of my screen tearing. Got a few other settings here. Additional drivers, which I don't have. And yes, the window effects. Now, the one thing I did was, um, which one is it? So yes, um, one thing I do uh, try to switch on, actually it's not in this one, is it? I think it's in open box settings, which is windows, I believe, or appearance. Moving and resizing windows. Update the window contents while resizing. Now, if that's not checked, when you up when you resize your window, see how it's black. But if you click that, then it updates the window as you're moving it. Now, it'd be nice to see this little box here, um, the correct size for this font. It never is, so you've got to actually move the box over to get that. Now you can see it's correct. So that's been like that, I think, since the first release. So it'd be nice to see little things like that get fixed. So you do have quite a few little options here. Desktop margins, desktops, mouse, move and resize, windows, font, appearance, and the button order, you can change the button order and this is the button you're looking at here and you just change the letters according to what um, order you would like them in. And then you've got the theme which I've changed already. You've got desktop notifications. You can position where you want your notifications on the screen. Advanced settings. Default duration. The width and the spacing. You've got some power management those settings there with the lid lid watcher I've never heard of that one before on battery on AC you can choose to do any of the any of those and the same here enable idleness watcher monitor settings and users and groups so there's plenty of um, plenty of little tweaks there not not overwhelming just enough and keyboard and mouse, I don't know whether they've got the keyboard shortcuts here, the keyboard layout, keyboard, cursor, mouse and touchpad, keyboard layout. I don't know if they've got keyboard shortcuts here. Doesn't look like it. And the one thing they do have is a right click and show hidden. So you can turn the hidden files off with the right click. So I do like that. Options here. So you can add to your bookmarks. So they don't, by default it doesn't come with your bookmarks there. So this one here you could say add to bookmarks. So you've got your bookmarks down here. Oh, that's a column. Um, we could probably remove from bookmark. Um, you could probably drag and drop this somewhere here, I think. No, you can't. You can add that into there, but that doesn't help, does it? No. So anyway, you could open, you got to open your documents and then you could bookmark and add to bookmarks. And there we go. I don't know if you can directly right click and add to bookmark. No, you can't. So you'd have to open that and bookmark and add to bookmarks. So we can build up all those ones there. 
So we, our keyboard shortcuts is on the website there. If we have a look at uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts they've got. Um, some of them are here. You've got key bindings for, you know, go to left desktop, go to right desktop, control alt left, control alt right. So if we was to do that, control alt right, desktop two, back to desktop one. Go to first desktop, what's W, super key, oh yeah. Um, send to desktop, so I could send SA, shift and alt. So if I wanted to send this uh, Firefox to desktop, W is the super key, is it? So W, F1, go to first, go to second desktop, W, F2. So Windows key F2, and that's not working. So if you're interested in the key bindings uh, for the system, this is the place to go. It's got all the key bindings you will need. So we can go Windows F3 to Desktop 3, Windows to F2. Now, it wasn't working for me to start off with because my F buttons need the function key. So if you find that you hit the Windows key, and one of the F2 or F1 or whatever, or the corresponding button that doesn't work, you may need to hold down the function key. So just keep that in mind. So that's the keyboard shortcuts. They do have um, this Trajita. I've tried this before. I didn't really find it um, real suitable for myself. I'm not sure whether it will work. I might try it again. Um, yeah, that's okay. But normally I'm accustomed to Firefox, um, Thunderbird. Normally I might give this another go, see if it works or not, but uh, we'll see, time will tell. Now you have got desktop preferences here and you can uh, enable a slideshow. You've got advanced here, you can turn off uh, any of those individual ones on the desktop and you need to apply that. Or you can turn them back on and apply that. If you was to right click the desktop and hide desktop items, you can hide the whole lot in one go. And there we go, like so. And then you can switch them back on. So once you switch them off, you lose all these selections here because they're not needed. Searching for programs seems to be very responsive. Fairly quick. Don't think there's any problems with that at all. Additional drivers. Yep, it's very responsive and very quick. So seem to have sorted that out. And if you do do a search and then you press the Windows key, it does reset the search. It used to hold the search there. So if I was to close the window, the menu with the window key and then open it back up, it would still be like that. But now it's cleared out so that is that there's some nice little subtle changes I've noticed in this release now they could have been in the last one but I'm I'm not sure whether they were or not but just all these little things which is just uh, putting Lubuntu in a really good direction at the moment and probably the behind the scenes stuff I suppose is what they're really working towards I'd have to think to make sure they get everything up and running but as a desktop it seems to be running quite well I haven't had any crashes no issues I am recording I've got a couple of tabs open in Firefox and if we have a look at system tools and HTOP let's have a look at what I'm using so I'm using one gig of three points of four gig of memory pretty much so uh, on a low spec laptop now, I don't know if we got anything in here. Type in a terminal. INXI, I think it is. Um, can we stall? Uh, yep, sudo apt install INXI. Okay, so let's clear that off and have a look at INXI. I think it's dash capital F. So that's my specs there. 
Uh, what have we got here? Machine, idea pad, CPU, Intel Celeron N3060 at uh, 1.6 megahertz almost. So that's the machine there. And uh, if we have another look at HTOP, uh, we're running slightly higher now, but still not even half of the memory. And the CPUs are at 60 65% roughly if you want to if you wanted to cal calculate a happy medium there 60 to 65% there and that's all looking good so you've also got under system tools or preferences software sources put in your password and you've got your software sources there if you need to update those or do and make any changes and you can click the arrow to move across more. So that was Lubuntu 1910, a quick look around. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it interesting and informative, and thanks for watching.